Danny Austin from Post Media, kind enough to join us. Uh, he basically runs this show now. Um, how are you? I'm good. I want to lead with one question. When you said that me and Peter Marr were Muhammad Ali meeting Elvis, Peter is both, right? He is both the Muhammad Ali and the Elvis in that situation. Oh, no, you're Elvis. I'm Elvis? Okay. Elvis. I'll like take it. Pete's the world champ, right? Yes. And yeah. bonafide world champ. But, dude, I mean, you make the ladies swoon and, oh, yeah. and you know, all those Elvis things. Just don't eat any peanut butter <laughs> and banana <laughs> sandwiches. That's all I would ask between don't now and then. Don't make me sing on air. No, we won't make you sing on air. Do. Would you trade me the first pick if you were Chicago, if I gave you all 13 of my picks in Arizona, which includes two first rounders and a second rounder? No. Well, hold on now. Let me just let me just lay this out. You as Chicago already have an extra first rounder. So that would give you three first round picks. You have four second rounders. That would give you five second round picks and I believe seven third round picks. Because you would have 23 picks in total. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have Connor Bedard. You wouldn't have Connor that's, Bedard, no, that's the but, but you could have a whole bunch of really good hockey players. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm honestly a believer that you don't want too many 18-year-olds in your system or 19-year-olds. Yeah, you'd, like, um, you'd have 23 of them. <laughs> yes, I think that's too many to be developing at the same time. All right. Um, I'm also just a believer that when it comes to, you know, and this is to be honest, across sports, if you can get a generational talent, you get the yeah. generational talent. And that's, I mean, it's all, honestly for me, it's like, it's a fun question, but there is nothing that you could, other than there is sort, Connor McDavid. You, if you gave me Connor McDavid, but not Leon Dreisaitl. If I yeah. offered you Leon Dreisaitl, straight up, if I offered you Leon Dreisaitl for Connor Bedard, the first overall pick, are we assuming that the Oilers win the cup this year or not? I'm just saying right now in this moment, and I think right now in this it's moment, would you not question. would you not make the case that Leon Dreisaitl is the best player right now? I'm not saying forever or all or all season or whatever, but I thought a week ago Matthew Kachuk could have that title. Yep. And we all know that Connor McDavid's going to be that at some point, or is that. But right now, is anybody playing better than Dreisaitl? I have absolutely no issue with anyone who would make that argument. I mean, my argument is always going to be McDavid is the one who scares me sure. most. You, yeah. On any given shift, he's the one who I still feel can change the game faster than any anyone, including Dreisaitl. But, like, look, if you want to tell me Leon Dreisaitl is the best player in the world, well, what's the, He looks like a pissed-off maniac. Yeah. Right? With like, his ankle not hurt this year, he's just he's on he's a different just, level and was arguably the best player in the playoffs last year. Right. Um, so, right. I mean, yeah, he's... But you wouldn't trade him for Connor Bedard? It's an interesting question. Um, how old is Dreisaitl? 26. 26. Gavin's going to jump yeah. here in a second. You're giving it, you're giving up a bunch of years there. So for me, no, I still want <laughs> Okay. I like this one. Thanks, Gav. I like this one. Would you trade Connor Bedard for McKinnon, McCarr, and a first rounder? Yes. <laughs> Of course I would. Yes. <laughs> okay, he's uh, 27, great, he, by the way. So okay. so dry cycle's 27. So, yeah, so that's the thing. I mean, you're giving up nine. You're giving years. up a decade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So for me, that's where where Bedard and even if Bedard doesn't reach those levels, um, he's still going to be a perennial all-star year in, year out. He's you know, if we ever get back to the Olympics, he'll be an Olympian. He, he he's one of those guys. So even if Absolutely. he doesn't hit that McDavid level, you're still getting 10 years of, of that quality player. Um, so for me, that's no brainer. But yeah, look, if you're giving me Kale McCard, Nathan McKinnon, and uh First rounder, did he say? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cal McCarr is pretty special, too. He's special. <laughs> He's, so. But what I was looking at was really all these tanking teams this year that collected all these draft picks, right? Yeah. And now you've got, you know, it, uh, Chicago's got like 13 draft picks already or 14 draft picks. And if you were Arizona, do you just ship them all and say, we'll take your number? Well, of course you wouldn't do it because of exactly what you said. You can't have 25, 18 year olds or 19 year olds in your lineup. And Lord, what if you're good? What if you draft really well and they all pop at the same time? Then what yeah. are you going to do? So they do that. Does that make Austin Matthews their first or second line center in a year or two? Who? Chicago? Arizona. Arizona? Yeah. He's, <laughs> you're, why does everybody keep saying that? He ain't I'm going, a Leafs fan. Too, so I don't know why I'm saying He's it. not going there until there's a new building, right? Fair. Yeah. Like he's not going to play in that. Yeah. We, just, you yeah. were there, right? No, I've never been there. But yeah, Oh, I, I thought mean, you, you weren't in the small rink this I've year? I've not been to that arena, no. Okay. Because I don't think it's West was our guy there. I don't think it's fair to call it a dump because it's a really nice 5,000 seat arena, it's five but it's a 5,000 seat arena. Exactly. Yeah. It's not big enough. It's not NHL quality. Um, Great. Um, we haven't talked. Um, what, what thoughts on the Flames have been, you know, active? Have they ever? <laughs> There's never a dull summer. <laughs> no, the it's just, it can't help themselves. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's been like, it's been interesting. I, I, I listened to Peter on yeah. here. I obviously read Rick Bell's column. I will say that as someone who was at the arena every day, um, I just couldn't disagree with that assessment that this is young players being entitled more. Mm -hmm. I, I genuinely, it was a miserable place to go yeah. most days. Um, and I ultimately, like, I nothing but respect for what Daryl has accomplished, but I do, I do think we all know that what he was doing wasn't working with yeah. this group and they underperformed. Um, and as someone who didn't grow up in Calgary and who sort of had an outsider's view of the flames for many, many years before arriving here and, and sort of engaging with the sports scene. I mean, my impression was always that this was an organization that was content with just making the playoffs and seeing what's happened. So I, I think it is refreshing when it comes to that particular component, the, the Sutter component that no, they didn't achieve what they intended to and they're making changes. Um, now I, I really, I just don't see how it's not Conroy as the new GM. Uh, I, I don't either. Um, other than, you know, if you get it in your head that it, you know, it can't be somebody who was part of the previous administration. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think that there's like, arguably the flames underperformed over the last five to six years. Mm -hmm. Right. Now mm -hmm. there are, there are some other factors. And I think that we know, I mean, if you look in there, there, each one of them needs to be taken on their own. It's not yep. fair for me to say, but you look at, you know, Dougie Hamilton, you look at TJ Brody, Mark Giordano, Matthew Kachuk, Sam Bennett, who maybe didn't ask for a trade, but is obviously performing better out there. Johnny Gaudreau, all of this. I mean, there's just been this, this exodus from Calgary um, over the last six, seven years. And that for me is the bigger thing that they need to figure out. Is it the arena or is it like, what is going on that? And no one wants to talk about it, but I'll talk about it yeah. because I have a, I absolutely believe that the biggest issue, the next general manager has to clean up, clean up is he's got to make it so that players want to play here. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, 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 I love the internet people because of course they remind me of the fact that he was never coming, but what's the legacy of Brad for living. If Adam Fox is a flame, mm -hmm. you know, I yeah. mean, it's a kid they drafted. Nobody else drafted him. The flames drafted him. He maybe got drafted after, well, he would have got drafted after, but the flames went and got him. Mm -hmm. Right. But they couldn't keep him. This was not a destination he wanted to go. Say what you will about Johnny Gaudreau. He left $15 million in a year of uh, salary. 15, well, a year, which would have been 15 million on the table. And Kachuk wanted to go elsewhere. I think building is part of it. I think, you know, part of it is, you know, the captaincy issue that should have been dealt with. It was ridiculous that it wasn't dealt with. But also, I think there's. And by a, dealt with, we mean Michael Backlund should have been the captain. Yes. Yes. Sorry. That's. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to be done a little earlier today because neither one of us are going to argue about that. <laughs> um, but I, I will say, I think you hit the nail on the head as an out, outside observer, as a, as somebody who was on the inside, sometimes this organization is too comfortable in the middle yeah. and, and too risk adverse, right? We don't want to alienate anybody. We don't want any, anybody mad. So you've got really kind of tepid, you know, social media, you got pictures of guys coming in and I like the people that do it. They're just doing what they're told. But, you know, I watched this, you saw the Titans, schedule video mm -hmm. uh th th that kind of creativity is not this and i've seen it they did fish bird for christ's sakes i've seen them do fun stuff but they just they're they're happy in the middle they're always happy in the middle why didn't they take joe ginla like uh, you, you know what i mean and that's that's yeah. <laughs> uh, but and i'm sure there's a reason and all of that but sometimes you got to go out on a limb sometimes you got to take a risk well, sometimes I'm you got to be uh, uh you know look at the customer's point of view and with Allowing the caveat that sometimes people misspeak a little bit. I mean, and when Tree Living stepped down and, and Maloney and Bean did that press conference, I think that the quote that really got taken and, and run with was was John Bean saying, I'm not even allowed to say the word rebuild um, when he said that. And I think people really, really didn't like I got mad at it because I heard it out of uh, Feaster's mouth before. So it wasn't new. Well, and, and it's ridiculous. It is a fact in sports. You know, in the NFL, you got to go get your number one quarterback. You got to go yep. get your number one center. You have to, and I'm not saying tank, but you have to put yourself in a position where you're losing and have a high draft pick. How many times so has this club or, uh, drafted higher than fourth? Never. How many times did um, you draft fourth? Exactly. <laughs> right. And, like, and then, and then our friends to the north drafted first four times in six years. Right. And right and, now, and look where they are. In, in right now, in the year of our Lord 2023, how many Oilers fans? Are remembering how horrible it was there for six or seven years. They've forgotten it. They threw jerseys time. on the ice, yeah. and now, but it doesn't matter anymore. And now they're gonna. It doesn't. Now no, they're making all the money back, and, and they are. But having said that, Chicago's an interesting story too because uh, how many fans were pissed off this year because they were tanking after you know yeah. Kane and Taves, right? Like 
that part you can't, you know, how many Raptors fans are angry this year? That's well, it's not good for sports, but it's the reality. I mean, look at absolutely like, it is. I mean, look at the NBA right now. And I mean, Philadelphia, they they did the process. They they mm-hmm. tanked for four years and then they, you know, it didn't fully work out. That's generally the way that you build a contender in professional sports is you have to get a top one, two, three pick for several years in a row and then develop that core. But I think people I think players I think players and I play I don't think there's a problem with the city. I don't think people don't like the city. No, but the city with I live here. I've lived here for 13 years. Yeah. I've chosen as an adult to make Calgary my home. Yeah. So like don't take this all right. We're also not a city that is going to be a destination because of the city. People but we have the lar- but we have the largest alumni in the entire National Hockey League. I think when people get here they love it in general. Oh, but you're saying you're saying picking it on a map going I've got to go there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, makes I, sense. I mean Matthew Kachuk like it makes sense that he wanted to be in Florida. You know, forget all the state taxes and all that. It's beautiful all year. You Wasn't know? that was any of that connected to captaincy? And that's a fan theory. That's not a that's not I a, think we have a ground in 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 you know, I'm not ta- I just know that people were talking about that last year. I do think when Daryl said this year when he was like you've got to remember that Matthew is American and for two years of COVID, he was really isolated here and couldn't see his family. And that's different from yep, the Canadians. Absolutely. I think that that made a, an impact. Um, fair. That's fair. Look, I've said this a million times. We in the media, we knew Matthew Kachuk was good. Here in Calgary, including last year, we didn't realize he was this good. No, 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 no. This is this is not this. This Matthew Kachuk could have beaten the Oilers last year. 100%. Right? Could have beaten because he got uh, Ma- uh, Matthew Kane. Uh, uh, pa- uh, Patrick Kane, all the other Canes, Evander, that's the right Kane. He got inside of his head. He shut him down. Yeah. This year, that isn't happening to this guy. Not at all. Right? This guy could have led you. Right? And it's fascinating. I don't know what changed, right? I mean, I don't know if it's just another year of development, another year of maturity of him gaining that confidence, but this was, he is a top five NHL forward. And I don't think that we in Calgary realize that that's what he will out. right now. He will be the best player the Flames ever drafted. Not necessarily yeah. the best forever Flame, but he will be the best Flame ever drafted because I think while well, Newendike would have something to say about that because there's the Stanley yeah. Cups and stuff like that, and Vernon the same thing. Maybe I'm a little ahead of myself, but has the potential. How about that? Has the yeah. potential to be the best Flame He's ever drafted? A wonderful player, and as a again yeah. as a guy who grew up a Leafs fan, I'm not that emotionally invested in the Leafs no, no, yeah, yeah. anymore. I would like them at one point to win a championship in my life. They do, sure. Um, but like I don't the emotional ups and downs I don't suffer through, nor do I really get a ton of joy from. But like it's hilarious what he's doing to the Leafs. Mm-hmm. Like it's even as a Leafs fan, I'm like, that's the guy I want on my team. Yeah. Right there. And and I look at him and and I go, Ooh, boy, he we could have used him last year. And he was so good last year. Yeah. Right. He's only one of four players to score have hundred point seasons in back to back years on two different teams. Do you know who the other you know who the other local tie is? No. Mike Rogers. Really? Yep. Fascinating. Yeah. I, I please don't ask me for any follow-up trivia. Yeah. Nope, nope, that's okay. Mike's coming oh, on the saying, show here in the next little while. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And up, uh, Kale McCarr is really putting a dent in Mike Rogers is the best player ever come out of Calgary. Argument I have. Kale McCarr is a special, special player. Wow. Um, it, it was cool last year when he brought the cup down the bow. I yeah. live like I live in Sunnyside, so it was easy for me. I just popped out and seeing how many fans were actually out there for a player with the cup from another. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I, that's part of the problem around here too, is that you go, there's too many other teams, jerseys and hats in this town. Um, you need to do something to combat that. I'm in a, an, I'm in a hockey rink every weekend and I watch it and I see, yeah, a couple flames hats, but here comes a Vegas hat. Here comes a Seattle hat. Here comes a Crosby hat. And here comes an Euler hat. And when I go up to watch our kids play up in Edmonton, you don't get that. Yeah. Now I will say that, I mean, I there was one game last year where I decided that instead of instead of driving to the Saddle Dome, I wanted to just take the LRT because mm-hmm. I think it's important for all of us in media to get out there with the fans a little bit and remind <laughs> remind yourself why you're doing a, li- a little bit and, and like <laughs> only a little bit though. Oh, <laughs> um, you do wow. Have to be, I, I ultimately though, I mean, I got on and like it was. I've never like it, it was amazing to experience living in the city for as long as I had there. I think it was game one or game two against Edmonton. I forgot which one it was, but it was just like a sea of 16 year old kids. It was all, it was kids all in flames jerseys, all hyped. And I was like, Oh yeah, that's why we do this. That's why we do this whole thing. Because that like, I'd never felt that local spirit outside of stampede, which isn't really my thing. Um, and well, that's what a team can do. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you know, this, this whole thing starts with why not Conroy? I think it needs to be Conroy. 
yeah. I think, you know, why not? I, yeah, I can come up with a reason, but it's not a, to me. And I've, I've said this oh. all along. It's not whether or not Conroy's right for this job. It's whether or not this, you know, the job is right for him in, in a sense of he's, what else is he supposed to do? I'm not a gambling man, but if I was, I would put my money on Conroy with again, land a consulting role. Um, for the next year yeah. he finishes out his work in the Okanagan and then again, uh, joining his assistant. So then and that's what I would, I, and I, I, and that's not sourced, but that's no, that's the sense. I'm that's making. what I would like to see. Um, what about a coach? I don't, I mean, I, I do genuinely believe that they are like, it's going to be the GM's decision. Oh no, no, I, I do. I, I do too. I know everyone, I do too. Yeah, everyone is saying Mitch, Mitch love. And I, I do hope that he, he gets a good solid look. I will say for those people who think that, you know, Mitch love is, is, Mitch Love is a hard coach. He he drives. Oh no no, he's he not a he's no 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 no. Um, yeah yeah yeah. But I, I'd like I mean look what he's done with the Wranglers is incredible. Uh, you know, knock on wood, they survive the weekend. Um, but I, I don't have that strong opinion on a coach. I mean, my thing is to be honest, like the coach obviously matters. I'm just as interested in like I, I think you have to have a decision on Lindholm basically by the draft, right? Okay, so one back on the coach. I nearly drove off the road when one of the more popular podcasts in Canada suggested that Bruce Boudreaux. Would be yeah, a candidate. I've yeah. heard it too. Uh, and I like Gabby. Nothing wrong with Gabby. But John Cooper's been the head coach in Tampa Bay for 10 years. Mm -hmm. In that time, there will be six coaches in Calgary. Yeah. For a myriad of reasons. Not There needs to be some stability. There needs to be the right guy and the GM picks that. Would you or would you not interview Carla McLeod? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would interview absolutely everybody. Like absolutely everybody who who is qualified. Um, I, I again, I just don't think that we're anywhere near that process. No, 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 no. This yes, is the fantasy is, part of the show. There is no, yeah, there is no part of me that would would say no to any any candidate. So, so yeah. I, I would, but the, no, I would. Don't give me Quinville. Don't give me Bowman. Not no. interested. Yeah, I mean, I think when Maloney said, "I think we need young with new ideas," he was saying that in in, in relation to the general manager. But I think that's just generally true i think the and, again back to what we're talking about the organization needs to have that kind of yeah and and young doesn't mean that they have new ideas right like you, you can't just say oh they're they're young and I, I do think that this team has a history of hiring i mean glenn gullitson a lot of people were high on that that didn't work out this he is it's not as if there's a, a straight line here where you hire a young person and they're going to be successful you've got to get it right and you have to get the summer right this is as important a summer as the Calgary which Fighters you've alluded to which yes. you bring up er um eric lindholm uh, you bring up Elias Lindholm. Um, Boomer and I, at the beginning of the week, he just kind of brought it up out of the – like he he wouldn't bring any of that seven back um, that are due next year, right? The ones we we're cool. talking about. He's just blowing them all out. And I said, Lindholm? And he said, absolutely. I, I Lindholm would make – said, I have – we asked him, will you consider resigning? He said, I have one year left. He absolutely refused to even like – Acknowledge that it was a possibility of resigning. In my opinion, after what happened with Gaudreau and Kachak, if Lindholm's gone, you you don't have much choice but to trade them. Oh no, hundred percent. And yes, 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 and yes. You've got to do it by the draft. Yeah, I agree with so, that. And and you get value for him. Hundred percent. You get value for him. What do you do with Backlund? Uh, I have a conversation with Backlund, and if, and if Backlund is sincere about, I, I try to sell him on staying. I think it's important that you have. This. I, I'm impressed. I, I don't know if you picked him up, picked up on that, but he's showing up in Flames Media. He's in town. Mm -hmm. um, he's doing community events, looking like a captain would, which he should be captain. I agree. We we are there, but I, I also like. I also think that in general, um, have a conversation, and if he is sincere about, look, I've put in my time here. I want to go chase a cup. I don't think the organization's mm -hmm. close. That's an actual just do the right thing and, and give a sure. loyal servant, you know, what they want. And um, I think that would be very hurtful for, for the organization. I mean, I think that they do con continue to insist that they view themselves as contenders just with a few little tweaks here and there. Um, but again, we can't talk about rebuilding and retooling and not consider if those guys aren't going to sign, you have to get assets back. Do you... Re, are you are we talking about the R words or whatever with Coronado, with Pelche, with Dewar, with Wolf? You know, Poirier probably not out of the gate, but seems to be trending that way. Mm -hmm. Connor Zeri, although I don't think he's had a great playoff, but you know, has now you're talking about five or six young players. 
Is it more about infusing them into the lineup and finding space for them? In the, and I haven't given up on Matt Phillips. I, I still hope they give the kid a one-way, one-year deal and let him show if he can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so now we're talking six, seven guys. That Can you do it that way? I mean, the question is whether any of them are first-line guys, right? I mean, at some point you need that first-line scoring. That, you you that, don't think Pelche's? You watched him <clears throat> up closer than I did. I watched him through a video screen. Yeah, I, I think Pelche is exciting. I think he... There's a lot to his game. Yeah. Um, I I don't know that his numbers justify necessarily saying he's going to be a first line guy. Okay. Um, now he was also on a line with with Lucic. I, I yeah. don't think that he was on a line that necessarily <laughs> brought out the best in him sure. offensively. Sure. I'm super high on Peltier, but like being super high on a guy does not necessarily mean I think he's going to be top twenty in league scoring. Right. At any point, Coronado is a guy who you know, even in that one game, just the way he puts himself in dangerous positions. Yeah. I. I I really think that that draft pick is going to be one that we look. Back I, at. I do too. I think it's a good um, pick too. And and that's a guy playing his first NHL game. Yeah, the whole thing. I mean, he's he'll have to do the work on his body, make sure he's there. But I hope that we're seeing Coronado. From for from what it's worth, was uh, we just had Stephen Ellis on. He was watching the Americans earlier today. Said he was the best player for the Americans. I believe that at the World Hockey Championships. Yeah. For what that's worth, and that's right. without professional coaching. Yet, right? So, really? Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, that's right. So I, I'm really high on Coronado. And I like, for the record, I think Peltier, I mean, if Peltier ends up being another Mangiapane, um, I'm not, we're not talking about the sort of the, the up and down with Mangiapane over the last two no, years. No, but, but when he's right, he's a second line player. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think you're happy with that, Zary. I mean, you, you named the guys. And I, I mean, I'm, am I missing anybody that's still coming? I, don't know exactly who you named. I would expect Wolf. I mean, you weren't listening. Of, I just said it right to I, you. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to. No, but I, I'm thinking like like Wolf back I or any of those goal. things. Right. What's that? Wolf. They have to figure out a way to make be on the NHL. So Vladar's out. I think so. I think so. And I like him. I mean, it's uh, you know this has been the we're talking about trends with Calgary. Awesome backups. Really nice guys. Yeah. Good guys. Yeah. Like you know, <laughs> they're really good guys. Um, yeah, but, but I, I think you got to keep Markstrom. Yeah, and I think that you are going to start seeing those guys get integrated into it. They, they, you don't have any choice at this point from from a salary standpoint. No, um, in a lot of ways, and it didn't work with these veterans this year. They didn't make the playoffs, so um, I don't I don't know how you make space for all of them, and I don't think it is next year. But yeah, I would want Peltier, Dewar, Coronado for sure mm-hmm. next year, day one. Assuming they have good training camps in the lineup playing every single day. Would um, you sign Maddie Phillips to a one year, one way deal? I would, but if I was Maddie Phillips, I would go somewhere else. Yes. Even if they came, even if the new GM, the Conroy, even if it's Conroy, who's been with him the whole way mm-hmm. and pushed for him, but like yeah. he was in his corner the whole time. You think, you think the local kid would say no? Look, if, if they are promising the opportunity, maybe. Well, that's what I mean. One way that's I, I realistically, I'm not sure I'm offering a one way, but I'm using that one way piece to say, okay, we learned yeah. we're, we're putting you there. I, if I'm Matthew Phillips, I'm at the point in my career where one way or another, I want to play in the NHL and I probably Do you want, think he's an NHL player. Um, I am 60, 40. Yes. Okay. Um, I will say that like, I've talked to scouts mm-hmm. who have said, Oh, it wasn't that crazy what the Flames did this year. No, you know? no, no, um, no, 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 you know, no, 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 no. There's a lot. hockey case to be made. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, that doesn't mean, like, the part of me that is just a human, I mean, the part of me that's a sports reporter doesn't want to go and say, like, yes, get him in, because I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Like, I do think that his size um, is could be an issue at the NHL level for sure. But this is a person. I don't know. He's, he's done the work. I want to see him rewarded with an opportunity. And, he's, and, and he's, if he fails in that opportunity, then cool. He's an AHL player. Yeah. There's lots of people who have – Great lives, great careers in the AHL. Sure. It's just like what bugs all of us, and it bugs the fans. I think it bugs people in the media. Is to see a guy do the work, maximize his skill set, do everything, and it just not be enough, just based on size. Like that doesn't sit well. With no, me. it doesn't. It doesn't. It it doesn't. Um, um, I think that's about it. Like I, I, outside of your Lindholm question, I, you know, I I like him. I think you need to keep him. But I, you know, I'll tell you this, when Boom and I put up the social media, I was the minority. Boom was the majority. Was every, you know, the fans have this, at least the majority of the fans seem to have this will to move on from these guys. And I'm, to be clear, if you can keep Lindholm, I'm on your side. Yeah. Oh, I think he's one of the best two-way centers in the league. I agree. I think you absolutely yep. should try should try to keep him. I just don't think you can. Yeah. I think, I think his answer is 
to me, it was like a read between the lines, and and it was a pretty clear reading that this guy is not going to. But be didn't here. didn't you read that once Daryl got let go, all the players rescinded their trades requests? I, didn't you read that? I I, I don't know that I. Or read did you write that? I'm sorry, maybe you wrote that. I... Um, we'll see. I mean, and that's we. It is. This is why it's such an interesting offseason, and it's just it's bizarre after last year, where I remember sitting with a couple, you know, other media people having beers and being like. Well, we survived this one. It doesn't get any crazier. Yeah. It doesn't get any oh. weirder than than last summer. And now, to be honest, it feels like this one could be just as significant. Um, no, it could, it, this is probably more significant than last year. I have a question for you. Just one more on the Flames, and then we will get to the Stampeders. Mm -hmm. um, we have not talked about the announcement of a deal in principle for the arena. Mm -hmm. I've said today, and I've said on a couple of occasions, I'm a little bit taken aback that there's no champion of this right now. There's nobody from the flame side out in the community. Well, you know, I, I remember Ken King with Calgary next did as much radio and as much, you know, got in, took calls, did all of that, you know, really push, 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 push. It almost seems like they made the announcement and then they kind of walked away from it. Um, and I'm a little bit, I, I'm trying to figure this out. Wouldn't you, if you just made the, wouldn't you try to sell people on this? I'd wait until after the election. Um, is that what's happening here? I, I think? so to be clear, this is so far above my pay grade that this is I am. There's no pay grades <laughs> here. You know that. I am. I am not speaking for anyone with the flames. What I'm saying is, no, 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 no. From from my perspective, yes. The second Danielle Smith tied it to the election, yes. You're suddenly sitting there with a relatively in this city unpopular, yes, premier. yes. Um, you don't want to go out there and start championing this move and, and saying, hey, vote for the UCP because that'll get us the arena built when there's a possibility the NDP is going to win. And then you're on their bad side. I think with the, you know, the Bill Smith stuff, there might've been lessons. Learned yeah, there I, you're probably right. That's probably a smarter take than mine. Mine is just like, why you got to push now because, you know, and I'm critical of a lot of things and maybe I'm wrong about this, but they had Lanny there. They had Jamie McCown there. They had mm -hmm. kids in jury. Like that felt like shovels in the ground kind of announcement, not boy, here's hoping. Uh, kind of announcement and i'm worried like you are like i said day one of the election if i'm Ra rachel notley i come out and i go not only are we doing the arena we're building a football stadium have that ucp <laughs> you know wouldn't that be something <laughs> wouldn't that be something um yeah and it never yeah. happened i mean it's like it's it's one of those weird weird spots for any of us to be in because I fully think that there should be public debate and public conversation about the amount of money, where the money is coming Absolutely. from. Absolutely. And yet I am also still, and like, that's, that's true of every, sure. every infrastructural project and every, everything. This is not a, but no, like, no. I also just really want a new arena for the city. And, and so there's a part of me that I'm probably being irresponsible and not looking, looking at it as, as, as close. But I, 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 I got to tell you, I like the vision here, mm -hmm. you know, of, of, okay, it's going to be this and it's going to do this. And now it's going to connect the bell and, and the platform and the library. And it's going to re this is awesome. Okay. This I can get into. Yeah. The, the money. Okay. Sure. But you know, uh, and I, I say it all the time, whatever they spent, they spent more on the investment is going to be greater for the uh, underpass at the airport than it will be on this. Yep. I've never gone through the underpass. Mm -hmm. But that, we need it, so we have to have it. Exactly. It's all cool. But you're right. No debate. No, we're not having that conversation. And I, 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 you know, I have no love for the premier. But I thought she was being real honest when she said the only, you know, the only block to this is that you know you need to vote for us on the 29th. My jaw right? dropped. I couldn't believe she said it. But also, like to be fair, she was being honest. She was being honest. She, yeah. Right. So. Um, and yeah, it's it's one of those ones where I think that all of us are a little bit like, a we want an arena, yeah. And there's a level where it's like we don't want to wait another four or five years for another arena. So I'm supportive of there being an arena project. Yeah. And on some level, I mean, b it's not enough for me to change what I'm voting for. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Um, but c it's like it is because it's politicized. It's instantly just harder to talk about yeah. because people on one side are going to come in and, and and be mad at it. People on the other side are going to be mad at it for other reasons. And, exactly. And for those of us in sports media, one of the nice things is we don't have to engage in all of that stuff a lot of the time. No, but I but but it, I'm worried that you know we 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 got all excited and then it, you know comes whatever the election result is, and if it isn't that result, then does it go away? I mean, I imagine what happens is there are a couple more months of talks. Will they? sort a couple things out, out and I, I like this 
this feels like it's pretty close to the line. Yes, it does. But it, the last one was done at the line. It was yeah. signed at the line. The line was done. This one is such a better proposal. Than the last it is. One. No, no, no. It's it, better it, for the it, city. It, it like it, it is. And, and it, I, I don't want to do anyone's job for them, but like the the road infrastructure things, stuff like that, is actually needed independent of the arena. Like absolutely. It's, so it's like there's a very good argument for it. Um, it's just that I understand people who just say, "Hey." Yeah, look down in LA where they just built a multi-billion-dollar football stadium with no public money. You know, I understand people who want to say that. It's just I don't think it's realistic here. So for me, it's a non-starter of an argument. It's if this was an NFL money. facility, absolutely, yeah. but it's not. Yeah, it's, um, um, meanwhile, speaking of facilities, um, McMahon is humming again. Training camp is underway. Yep. Have you released your fifty thoughts yet? I have not. I will be working on that afterwards. Ah, <laughs> so uh, I was I, under the impression you were going to have it done so we could talk about I it. I believe. Well, but we could talk about it. We could talk about literally anything. Yeah, um, yes, we can. Peters, We've I, proven it that. Probably help with my fifty thoughts. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, no, my fifty thoughts will be out tomorrow. It's sort of one of my big uh, Stan Peters projects of the year. Uh, really, actually helps me because it's basically fifty story ideas, but it's you know hundred words per thought. It's five thousand words. Goes up online. Yeah. And uh, so my promise to you earlier in the week, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, we'll word. talk about that on yeah. friday uh then it, uh, yeah things got in the way having said that there's a lot to talk about with this team this Absolutely. year is there it's i mean it's this year i am i i mean i find the st peter's you know and i love it mm -hmm. so i find them fascinating every year but there have been a bunch of changes um i went to the fan forum a, a month ago how was um, that awesome um what they have done at what i guess used to be called the red and white club yeah uh, now stamps house is is beautiful um I honestly like basically the Stampeders at that announced that they will be putting tarps on some of the upper sections. Yep. Um, to, and I had a lot of fans be like, well, you don't do what they're not doing anything to market the team. They're just reducing capacity. It's like, that's just not true. That like what Jay McNeil is doing. And I, to be honest, I, I want to get him on one of the times that I'm hosting. Please. If you time. don't, I will, because yeah. Jay's doing an amazing oh, job. It's amazing. And that just being in that stamp house, being in that environment, seeing the players interact, seeing Jay, seeing Dave, seeing yep. John Huffnagel, all of them interact. Um, I was just like, okay, this is the start of something. It felt like something new. It felt like something. Hmm. Um, it, it felt like them finally understanding the extra step that they have to go to reach out to fans in in, in today's yeah. era. And I, I, I was exhilarated by it. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited about it, um, about this season. And I, I think it's going to look different. And I, But I think that there's an acknowledgement that something new is needed and let's do it now the other thing is going to be the on-field product um and i know how much it bothers them like if we look at stan peter since john huffnagel arrived in what 2007 2008 yep 2008 yeah in general the minimum that you expect from them is the west final yep. right yeah like that's absolutely over, over 15 years the fact is they haven't been on a west final since 2018 and that bugs them if you know dave dickinson Awesome oh, yeah. dude, but he is competitive. Yep, and, absolutely. And, and they have been very, very clear um, to fans that this is Greg Copper bust, which I don't think that, I think based on some of what happened with free agency, um, I, I don't think people necessarily thought that maybe this was going to be a regression year. And that's simply not true. They are highly motivated to sort of rectify what they view as being, you know, a down couple of years. So what gets in their way? Uh, I think we need to see Jake Mayer emerge as a genuine top three quarterback in the CFL. Okay. Uh, I think that in year one, um, when he filled in for Bo, his accuracy was incredible. Um, he was great, but they weren't really getting the wins in those games. But I, I think we saw Jake and he thought, wow, this guy, this, this is Bo's successor. And I largely thought he did a good professional job um, in the back half of last season, he had the best offensive line in the league by a considerable distance, which helped. He had a running game in Kadeem Carey and Diedrich Mills, which was just absolutely lights out their back. But what you need is ultimately like this is still a quarterback league. Yep. Stamps are going to have the best run game. They're going to have the best pass protection. Um, but you need to see Reggie Bagleton, who they really misused last year. You need to see Jake get him involved. What do you mean to... misused? I just don't think they gave him the ball nearly enough. Okay. You know, so I, think, I think Reggie Bagleton could very well be the best receiver in the CFL. And last year, he was often their third, maybe even fourth option in some games. Um, and that is something that John Huffnagel in his postseason press conference last year said, we got to figure out a way to use Reggie better. Um, so and was that a criticism of the coach or was that? So. A, yeah. yeah, I think to a certain extent. Now they also switched quarterbacks mid season. Yep. So, yep. you know, there was, there were a lot of learning on the go. Um, but for me, honestly, I think that the defense, there are a couple questions I have in the defensive backfield, but mm -hmm. Every CFL team has sure. questions in the defensive backfield. And 
you know, I'm just, I feel like I'm just sort of going topic to my topic. But what happened with the defensive backfield last year is one guy after another got hurt. So all these rookies who were on the practice roster got moved into starters roles and then they got hurt. So they now have a couple guys with four or five games of experience going into year two that they normally wouldn't have. So it actually has potential to be extremely high end, young, athletic, with a little bit of experience, which I'm excited about. The loss of Jameer Thurman at linebacker really mm-hmm. not only like honestly disappoints me. Uh, Jameer, there's no one I respect more than Jameer Thurman in the CFL. I think yep. he's just a terrific leader, an amazing man, um, and I loved covering him. Um, but you know they've they, they've got experienced replacements, and, and Cam Judge has been there for a year, so I, I think the defense is good. I just need to see Jake Mayer. You need a superstar quarterback in this league. Yep, you just do. Is the defense a defense that's going to swarm and and get to quarterbacks, or is it going to be containing? So last year you had Sean Lemon, uh, who you know was second in the league in sacks. Um, the criticism of Sean Lemon has always been that his like the way that he plays on the run isn't quite as good. I, I think that that's a little bit unfair. I think Sean Lemon has been in the CFL for a long time and is about to get 100 sacks and deserves to be spoken as of as a superstar. He's gone. They brought in. They brought in Hauser. I believe that's how I pronounce his name. That's the first time I've had to say it on air. <laughs> who is a you know CFL East Division All Star? Um, who? So look, I, I don't know that much about him, truthfully, other than that he's got a pedigree that that speaks for itself. And then he brought in James Fodders, who man, like James Fodders in 2018, he was the backup to Cordero Law, but like eh, Cordero Law was an All Star or should have been an All Star. Yep. Um, and then Fodders went and got a couple years in the NFL. We didn't realize how good James Fodders was. He's back. He may be. I mean, he could be a top one or two defensive end in the league. You got Mike Rose in the middle, Derek Wigan in the middle have been there for a couple of years are absolute beasts. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to get to quarterbacks. Um, they're going to stop the run. I, I think that they have potential to be the best defensive line in the league. Anything we need to know in terms of special teams. I, I know that um, they've drafted another kicker. Did they not? And yeah, too early to, I mean, or, or, it's going to be Renee who is kicking field goals. Renee Paradis. Okay. So that we're not we're looking at the end of that yet. I would imagine this is the last year. Okay. Uh, he is also. He's in, a firefighter now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But um, he has permission. He just has to show up for practice. You don't, like, kickers don't go to meetings anyway. No, 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 so no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Just go kick the ball. He has to be there two hours a day, and he's the best kicker in CFL history. So if there's anyone I would trust to be professional, it's him. And then in Cody Grace punting the ball, you have, you know, this big booted Aussie guy who's been an all-star twice. He's amazing. So, um You've got Mark Kellum as special teams coordinator. The the thing that's going to be missing is Jalen Philpot, the first round draft pick, Canadian receiver out of the Calgary Dinos. Um, had a pretty decent rookie season with a few injuries. He's torn his hamstring. They announced it like two weeks ago, saying he would miss all of training camp. They didn't have to do that, which suggests to me he's out for a lot longer. Okay. Than training camp. Like why why do that? Yeah. You can just wait till the first day of training camp and then tell us. Yeah. You don't need to get ahead of it. And yeah, and he was also returning kickoffs last year, which means Peyton Logan, who was their punt returner for most of last year, will likely be in there, which just adds another element to the run game. I'm so excited to watch these guys run the ball. Yeah. It sounds crazy in the CFL. Oh, it does. Yeah. 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 Other than Andrew Harris and, and then John Cornish before him. Yeah. You know, we never talked about the run game, but like the stamps have potential to absolutely dominate on the ground in like in a way that i don't think we've seen in the cfl in 10 years they have by far the best run game huge guys they work well together they're good you know go one on one off it's, it's going to be amazing to watch any rookies that we should be keeping our eyes on um i haven't dove in enough i will say that um when you look at the receiving group i mentioned reggie bagleton malik henry was the the breakout um we're, so i really think what we need to be looking at is, is sort of that third american receiver um trey odoms dukes is a guy who got a little bit of a look last year it didn't blow me away mm-hmm. but i know how high his teammates are on him but you've got sort of tommy lee lewis coming in um you know i can probably pull it up here um do, do, do. we'll just vamp here for a second no problem um yeah, I mean, there's there's a guy named Andrew Parchman out of Florida State, um, Tyler Roberts out of Coastal Carolina. You know, that's the position that I'm really looking because the reality is Kamar Jordan, one of my favorite people yep. I've ever covered, uh, had, a, had a pretty off year last year, and I think it cost them some games. There were a couple drops, particularly against the Bombers, in two games that were, like, really, really damaging. Um, and if you can get a productive three Americans, that's what you need in this league. Mm-hmm. Um, and they didn't have it last year. So that that is the spot where I'm looking at, and then you have a big Canadian named Rice and John. Um, he's like six foot seven. Really interested to see what he does. He was down in the NFL for a couple of years. Dave, two roles this year. Mm-hmm. Is that 
a big deal? I mean, does that matter anymore? Is it, you know? I think it's a big deal. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm always going to be curious as to how involved John Huffnagel is with everything. Absolutely. Anyways, 100%, right? Yep. Um, so I, I think that he has help in both roles. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this is a criticism I have of the CFL in general. It, it tends to the same head coaches get recycled. I think that both Mark Killam and Pat Delmonico are absolutely ready to be head coaches in the CFL. And I'd love to see them get that opportunity. They are... Um, they have huge roles within the in the coaching staff, and I do think that Dave can delegate. How what she's willing to delegate is another question. Yeah, no, no. But there is no coaching staff that has more experience and is more. They've been together for a long time. Yeah. Those three guys, you know, they can complete each other's sentences. I, I, I really kill them. Coach last year, a game in Ottawa when yeah. Dave had COVID. Um, so that's why I'm not worried about it. It doesn't feel like like Dave. Like Dave is absolutely involved in player personnel decisions anyway. So the GM role, he should be able to slot into relatively quickly. You still have Cole Huffnagel. Uh, you still have Brennan Maloney. You still have sort of your scouting staff, which is very strong. So I, I don't know that it should be an issue, but I do expect Killam and Delmonico to be huge parts in in sort of some of the, the higher end decisions. When Mark gets a head coaching job, I mean, this is going to be a, a terrific story, isn't it? Because if I remember correctly, he came here from the U of A, did he not? I believe so. Yeah. As a strength and conditioning coach. And and then Amar is just like the best special teams coach in the league, um, you know, and, and has been that way. And is a guy, I mean, I will say that I've got to be careful with how I frame this because it's not hard to figure out who I'm talking about. But mm -hmm. I had a player who was was playing for another organization who'd been in Calgary and was writing me and literally being like, you have to just tell everybody that Mark Hill, I'm like, just say it publicly. Because if they hire the guy who I think they're going to hire, players aren't going to come. And he's like, every player in the league will come play for Mark Killam. He's that loved and that respected. Right. Um, and I mean, honestly, like he's been great to me too. So I'm, I'm yeah. happy to happy to sing his praises. No, um, he's he's a he's a good guy. He's a good representative. There's that's what I mean. When he finally gets that opportunity, I think this is that great kind of. I don't know if it's an underdog story, but it's a great from the ground up story. It's a great Canadian football story. Yeah, right? that's right. It's, it's the type of thing that we want to see. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and he's done it the right way, and he's done it with a you know, he hasn't made many enemies along the way, as far as I can tell. Um. And as a Calgary success story now, you know? Yeah, for is sure he is. Um, and I look around the league and I look at Corey Mace now, defensive coordinator in in Toronto, mm -hmm. came up out of here. I mean, the coaching tree that comes from Huffnagel yep. and now Dickinson is incredible. But Mark Killam, I just don't know what he has to do to get that opportunity. Yeah. Um, he, he should have gotten it already. Um, I think it shows a lack of creativity and a little bit of safe thinking on behalf of general managers and team presidents around the league that he hasn't gotten that opportunity. Um but it's time. And that may, to be honest, with Dave taking the jam role, I don't know how long he wants to do both, right? So it could end up being in Calgary, which wouldn't that be something? Hey, uh, that would be the ultimate story, yeah. right? Where he started to where he got to. And then if he has success, I guess that's the ultimate story, right? Um, some some talk, some thought on the CFL itself. Uh, some pretty staggering numbers coming out of Edmonton this week about their losses. Um, hard to think that that's not mimicked or replicated in other markets right now that uh or or is that a one-off in your eyes i think there are losses everywhere um you know i had someone tweet about tweet me about this and i will say i mean i was at the commonwealth stadium a number of times last year it was the worst there was nowhere toronto is not as bad as edmonton was last year in terms of in terms of just crowd yeah yeah now part of that is that commonwealth is huge yep um you know there was some bad weather there was some bad luck but i mean even the labor day replay which should be one of the biggest games of the year i mean i don't know i i imagine they said that there was twenty one thousand or something like that but like yeah i was sitting there with other reporters in edmonton and we were all saying there's no way there's more than 10 or 11 here um so edmonton i I, I think that was expected. I think those numbers were, were really awful. I think that like the on-field product has not been very good. I expect it to be a lot better this year, but they've got some rebuilding to do. Um, and I, I do like the energy that Victor Cooey brings there. Um, but I don't think that, I, I think that we have, we have had a decline here in Calgary um, that is very real. And that I think that you and I can feel right. Like oh, uh, no, absolutely, um, you can. Yeah, um, I, I there are less. There's less visibility around the city. There were smaller crowds, but it's worth noting that the crowds were they weren't as bad as they were in Edmonton last year. Now, BC, I imagine. I don't know what you know. 
profit, loss, revenue, all of that. No, but he was but, he's throwing money at it to to keep it, right? And and they built something. Like last yeah. year, no, Nathan Rourke's a big part of that. Sure. They built something. Saskatchewan, look, the numbers wouldn't look very good in Saskatchewan. Last year was a brutal season. It was deeply frustrating. There was a lot of negativity. That'll the second that they get they start building something positive there. It'll the come back. Be back. Yeah. Winnipeg, same thing. I mean, there's no better place in Canada to watch football than than Winnipeg. Um, the fans are insane. I like I when when the riders get back, we'll have we'll talk about that competition. But I swear, like that Winnipeg Stadium is if you haven't been, I mean it, it honestly should be bucket list, particularly a big Winnipeg Calgary or a Winnipeg Regina game mm-hmm. or a Winnipeg Saskatchewan game. Um then out east, look, there's problems out east and you know the the Red Blacks haven't won a home game in a couple of years. It's still one of the more fun places. If you can get in their little end zone bar, it's a great crowd. It's younger than pretty much anywhere else. Um, Hamilton is Hamilton. They they generally just draw a pretty decent crowd. And then Toronto and Montreal have had real problems. Yeah. You know, and, and Montreal had real problems last year with the ownership group. Uh, we'll see now that uh, my former boss, Pierre Carl Pelado owns the team. I, I think it being in French Canadian hands with a big businessman who has a large media reach, I think that's really going to make a difference. But um, do you buy in, in, in terms of that, do you buy the theory that he's running that organization and going to run it at a top level to attract the national hockey league to Quebec city that, that he wants to prove to Gary Bettman. They've been down that path a couple of times. Now he wants to go run an organization, run it at a high level to prove that they could do it in Quebec city. I like that idea. Um, if that's what he has to do, then go do it. Uh, that's not, that's not a knock on the CFL. Cool. I mean, no, not at all. I just, yeah. it's, it's actually kind of a, it makes sense to me on a level, well, right? And at some point, if you are if you are interested in owning a professional sports team in Montreal mm-hmm. or in Quebec, mm-hmm. just uh, the province in general, I don't think that there is any question that you eventually want within the next 20 years to have an MLB team mm-hmm. back in Montreal. So mm-hmm. I'm sure he's got that on his mind. Yep. You, you want to be part uh, of that. That's another, group. there's another piece. Yeah. And you're going to have to show MLB owners professional sports other than the Habs works in Quebec. Yeah. So this is another way of, of, of doing that. Um, Let's be perfectly honest with you. I mean, is Montreal, I may be wrong here, but I think I read somewhere that it's the biggest North American city without an NBA team. I might I might be making that up, but NBA is not even out of the possibility no. for no. Montreal. Um, so cool. If if the Habs or if the Alouettes are the are, are yeah. guinea pig a little bit, then all the better. Well, and that uh, we need to more me, money. <laughs> yeah, you do. And and to me, it's you know, you mentioned last year what a disaster it was in terms of ownership. I'm thinking they might have got the right guy, you know, in that regard. 100%. For those reasons, right? Yeah. For those reasons. He's got I mean, he's got deep pockets. And yeah. no matter what, I mean, people ask me all the time what's wrong with the CFL. They want me to talk about marketing. They want me to talk about this. They want me to talk. No, there's not enough money. This is literally the and like all those things. It's chicken and egg. I understand that. But like what this league but needs is money. What I okay. I I because you brought it up a little while ago and, and then went through your laundry list of, of cities, which I loved every second of. I hope that's okay. But let's come back yeah. to Calgary. No, you get the show next Wednesday, do whatever the hell you want. Um I want to come back to Calgary for a second. Uh, you're not traveling this year? No. Okay. Post-media travel is not. Okay. Okay. To me, that just speaks to one of the broader problems. Has any sport been more affected than the CFL, than the deterioration of the traditional medias? By not having supper time news, and by not having newspapers, and by not, you know, we can talk about the building, and I think the building's crap, and I think that hurts your attendance. Mm-hmm. But... Um, I don't know, Jake. Don't don't know. I knew that guy. I knew yeah. I knew Bo Levi. I knew Henry. You know, hell, we knew Michael Federick even. Um, but one of the criticisms that I have of the last 10 years or so, um, you know, was they just the players weren't available. Um, they weren't out, they just didn't seem, but then the outlets all went away, right? And then it became difficult. And then, and then you're the, you're the backbone. We've had this conversation. You were the backbone of this for the last couple of years. And now you're being stifled. I, I said that, not you, by the yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, the travel thing is, is a separate issue there. Um, and, and I mean, I, I think as you know, and I, I've spoken. But that doesn't help the coverage, Danny. No. Well, and, and I mean, the issue is for people who don't understand it. I mean, this is not actually like everything you are saying is right. It's not actually the CFL's fault. No, not but at all. If, not at all. And it's not the Stampeders fault. But no. if, if I look back to. 2016, 2017, 2018. I mean, those were my first three years. Yeah. 
Uh, you had TSN and a camera there every day. You would have had CTV and Google. Absolutely. Uh, Dave Rowe would have been there. Yep. Um, you know, there would have, I would say that there would be six probably media people every day. Yeah. At this point, it's me, Mark Steven, and like, I don't know if Matt Rose is going to be back this year, but like those were. That, the, that was it. And like. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, a decade ago, 15 years ago, when people were still consuming that media, you saw those guys. It's hard for me to name five Stampeders right now. Yeah. You know, off the top of my head, right? I don't know who Jake Mary is. I don't know who the Nick Lewis of this team is, right? And I, that's the joy of the CFL. That's the panache of the CFL. It was always, they were available. They were accessible. And this is not a criticism of, of Jean over there or any, it's not a criticism the of the CFL. Business, yeah. We just, it's evaporated well, on them. And I mean, to, to add to that, I will say that the people at Stamps TV, I mean, Spencer, Mikhail, and Natasha are honestly doing such an amazing Yeah, they job, are. But, but you have to actually seek that out, right? Right. The, the advantage to our traditional media is that it was in your face. That's right. You would be watching Global at 6 o'clock and you got hit with it. That's right. Maybe you're not getting that anymore. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, that's stuff that does need to be rectified and that's stuff that I've certainly found deeply frustrating no i know uh, you have i know um, you have my solution to yeah. everything is uh, uh, f1 drive to survive they need to find their content platform that works yeah. for them and i mean i'm like you know hoping to do more with you and and you know do more video and i, I will be with my friend darren bombing in winnipeg we were just like you know what let's just do a five minute hit on the cfl every morning record it toss it on barely even produce just a zoom call just have some video out there because I think no that's the, I think that's it. the future. Yeah, and I think like, that's the future. It'll be on YouTube. We might get a hundred views per thing, but at least someone's talking about the CFL because it's not happening on radio. It's no, not. it's not. Um, and so you know, we're going to try to do that a little bit this year. Um, I'm not a nine in the morning type of guy, so we'll see how it goes. But um, I understand. But yeah, so I look. I I don't I don't know the solutions, and it always comes down to this one thing, which like. I have a moment every year, and I'd like to say that it's Labor Day, but it's normally earlier than that, where all I've been doing NHL and, you know, I, I get back to stamps and I feel at home doing stamps. But then I have a moment where there's a game and it's normally Winnipeg and it's Calgary and it's these two teams and I'll feel like it's underappreciated. And in the middle of the game, the crowd's going nuts. CFL fans love the CFL so much. Yep. And I'll just be like, this is literally the best league in the world. And I honestly believe that. No, I know. And I could not do stamps this year. I like it's completely an option. I like I was told like if you don't want to do it, do it. And I'm like, no chance I'm not doing it. I needed a break. I needed to get away from it. I was mm -hmm. pretty frustrated at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. But I love covering the Calgary Stampeders, and I love like I love getting there two hours early, walking around the tailgate. It's the best tailgate in the country by far. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Um, I don't. <laughs> no, no well, I don't. people in other markets get mad at me and i'm like well it's just because you haven't done it like i and yeah. you know there's alberta in the summer it's such a special place and a special time and um i'm really looking forward to it and for all that's wrong with it there is a lot that's right with it and i always try to make that point because i think that people not you but i i will go on radio occasionally and they'll, they'll just do 10 minutes of bashing the cfl and i'm like well i love the cfl well but i'm i'm still of that and i we've had this conversation before i'm you know was the tail end of that generation that was so angry at the CFL, but had to defend it because it was ours. Yep. You know, the American, you know, that the tail end of the five in a row by the, the Eskimos and, and the American experiment and the good quarterbacks here in Calgary. But, you know, there was still two teams were always life and death, right? Two teams were always life and death. Mm -hmm. This team was life and death. Like it was life and death. Yep. And ah, damn it. Ah, it's the best league in the world. And, and it was kind of like that. Yep. But it always had good people. It always had good stories. It was uniquely Canadian for a lot of reasons. And, and that's, you know, again, we can even get into that, like, you know, the ratios and stuff like that. And uh, I, I worried about I'm more worried now than I've ever been worried about it more than I've ever been. Yeah. And I mean, it's always so tough. Like it's this is true of every sport, but it's like particularly feels true about the CFL. I watched with John Bender. Yeah. Um, he he did at what do you call it? Trolley, trolley five, trolley five. On 17th. He did a great cup watch party. Yeah. Probably 20 of us there. Um, it was awesome in the basement. It was fun. What a game that was. Mm -hmm. Um, number of friends who I had from Toronto again, I am from downtown Toronto, essentially yep. like yep. the area just around it. And my friends aren't CFL fans. They always ask me, they want to know, they want it to succeed, but they're not going to spend their money. Um, going to see a game and all of them are writing me after the great cup being like, I love this Muamba guy. Like, Oh my God, tell us more about this Argos team. What a game. That was unbelievable. 
And then there's six months where nothing happens. Yep. And, you know, there's six months where the Leafs are in the second round. The the Jays are pretty good. The Raptors. Mm-hmm. Have, and and the problem is you need the you need the Southern Ontario market in this country, you know, and, and they don't have it. Yeah, no, I, uh, hey, I came in, you know, it was all, you know, big and sexy when I started to bash Toronto. And we don't, you know, I, I remember being on 960 my first year going, yeah, get rid of them. We don't need them. Uh, it's exactly the opposite of that. Because if you don't have them, then Bay Street doesn't see you, then the media right. doesn't see you, you know, whatever that is now. But the decision makers in this country don't see you. No, and the money doesn't. That Well, that, the decision right. makers on yeah, the money, right? That's the, that's the thing. Um, and. I think that last year, I think the best thing that could have happened for the CFL, and to be honest, I've said this a million to people a million times. Last year, I would have led off the season with like the Bombers have won two in a row. Everyone's chasing the Bombers. That would have been my entire CFL marketing campaign. Mm-hmm. It's just the big bad Bombers. Mm-hmm. We're all coming for you. Let's go. Mm-hmm. I, chances are, you know, the presidents would have said, "Oh, you're putting too much focus on one team. We don't want that. It's got to be." Like, it would have worked. That is what you do. And the fact that the Toronto Argonauts. That team, with with the way that game played out, the the blocked field goals, everything that they beat the Bombers, is honestly the best thing that could have happened. Yes, for the CFL. Yes. Now you have a year where the Hamilton Tiger Cats have signed Bo Levi Mitchell, they signed Jameer Thurman, they have loaded up. The Tiger Cats are going to be an absolute just train this year. I think they're going to be amazing. Possibly setting up again. I will argue that Winnipeg has to be considered the favorite for the CFL this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those two teams have met twice in the Grey Cup. What yeah. a thing that would be in Hamilton a third time, this time with Bo. Other possibility is that it's Calgary. And like I Calgary and Hamilton. Or Calgary and Toronto, where your head coach and defensive coordinator and Fuller and Armalade, all these guys. These stories you can tell from week one. There's no reason why they they can't be trotting out videos highlighting like this is the crash course that all these teams could be on. We still don't have, we still are, are anchored to old thinking. Too many old thinkers. You mentioned, you know, we talk about Victor. I like Victor and he's a dreamer. Did you see the freaking snowboard set up in Commonwealth? I was up there. I saw it. It was awesome. Yeah, I was at the announcement for that, weirdly enough, as a favorite of a friend. Really? Uh, you know, Quinn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's called me and was like, hey, she's working with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was like, there's no way. So I, I've only seen it on YouTube. No, but we were up amazing. there and I drove by it and it was lit up at night and dark and, and it was, oh, it was amazing. And I'm like that, this guy gets it. Like yeah. he gets it. The guy out in BC gets it. I, you know, uh, you were talking about Jay earlier, like God bless you, Jay. And I hope you have more success than some of us did, but you, we need new thinking. We need new blood. We need, you know, it, it can't always be a callback to the past, right? Yeah. It can't always be. Uh, Because if you think people are going to put on fur coats and slip a little scotch into their hot, you know, another, I don't know, a drink, so I don't know, into their coffee uh, and go and sit minus 40 because that's what they want. That ain't this crowd. No. No. Jay gets that, though. There's. Yes, he does. Jay's. He is the perfect person for that role. He's deeply connected to the CFL, but also has had a tremendous amount of success in the business world. Um, Understands how to talk to corporate Calgary. Right. I mean, you need to bring corporate Calgary back back into the fold. You know, I am, there's no one who, like, I, I'm really excited to see what Jay brings. And part of that is I'm friends with everyone who works for the organization and they're excited. They're, they're, they're hard energized. not to like though. Oh yeah. Right. Um, they're hard not to, but, except, except for Ross Fullen. <laughs> um, anyway. Don't say a bad word about No, that. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Ross. I'm just yeah. kidding. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm like genuinely of the belief that I, I think that putting the tarps over is perfect. I honestly like. People, I would rather look at the tarps than those empty corners. 100%. And I've been looking at those empty corners for 15 years. 100%. Um, Give me a reason to take them out. Give me a reason to take exactly. Jason Kelly and that ticketing crew would be happy to go take them out. They'll sell them. Yeah. Well, they'll be out for Labor Day. They'll be out right. for the games against the Riders. Yep. Um, but this is how I know that it's not hopeless. His last year, Alex Snell came down, did a great interview with me. I appreciate it. But it was, I think it was week six, and the Stamps. And bombers were both undefeated. Although I don't know, it might have been it. They, it might have been game two that they played head to head. So the bombers might have been the stamps once. But either way, it looked. And I will maintain that last year there were three teams in the West that could have won. Mm-hmm. Um, the Lions with Nathan Rourke obviously 
beat the Stamps and beat them badly. But um, that game also had a couple weird play calls, all that. The Stamps were in the mix from your – but it felt as if it was the Bombers and Stamps finally, yeah. two powerhouses yeah. of the last – you know, seven or eight years, finally going to meet in the West final. Here we go. And attendance had been around 21,000. And I wrote a story, 20, and attendance for that game was around 26. 5,000 more people showed up for the big game against the big opponent. That shows me that people are still engaged. That shows me that that's people a great still care point. That's and a, that people will yeah, come out. That's a great point. Because if people were checked out and didn't care about the CFL, the opponent wouldn't have mattered. And Winnipeg, it's not like we have a bunch of Manitobans just hanging around Calgary going to every Bombers game the way we do with Riders. Don't you think it might have been your well-crafted story that might have just inspired people if to go? I could inspire 5,000 people <laughs> to go. I need to figure out a way to monetize that. Um, um, any scouting report on the world's fastest cow? I have not heard how tryouts have gone. Okay. Uh, I look forward to them and answer the world's fastest cow so I can talk trash with the new cow. Um, I spent four and a half years over there trying to get on the field against that cow. You know that I raced it, right? Huh? I raced it. Yeah, 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 no, no, I know. And you've been in GQ. I get it. Um, <laughs> I have been in GQ. I know you have been in GQ. Oh, funny how that showed up in another conversation. Oh, Julian's going to be all oh, over you. No. Um, I'm sorry, Julian. Oh. Hey, uh, switch of sports on you. Why? What? I thought we were getting a UFC event here. I or we still are. About that. I, that I don't know. Oh, come on. They, I know they chose to go to Vancouver. Um, so we're not getting one in June. Not as of now. Okay. No, they're, they're going to I Vancouver. had a guest on and everything talking about it. I was so pumped up and, and I was excited because, of course, 2012. Now there was one in 2018, but this the, was supposed to be. The 2018 one was great. That, and that, and JD Lewis is, you know, was on and he yeah. was talking about how great that one That was is. like a truly. I mean, the problem was it only drew around 11,000. Yes. Um, and it was a card that, admittedly, it's a card that if you look back on, looks even better. But as somebody who was covering the sport at that time. It was kind of like, eh. Oh, as somebody who was covering the sport, yeah, time, yeah, yeah, I yeah. couldn't believe how good it was. Right. It was just like guys who were maybe a fight away from becoming superstars. Stars. Yeah. But then, you, I mean, you had Jose Aldo. Like, it was it was a good card. Yeah. But it'll they'll be back here eventually. I mean, I still think that the UFC, like, they're not in the space anymore where they're just traveling every week to a new city. They do most of their events in Vegas at this point. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then the big ones, they'll travel. Um, but even then, the big ones are not. The big ones aren't going to Columbus, Ohio. You know? The big ones are going to Dallas. Yeah. So. Well, but now they've got WWE, so I know, it's right? It's it's crazy. It's fascinating. I'm not a huge like I like support like what you like, but I don't follow wrestling on a day to day basis, so I don't know what that deal means. How but, dare you, sir? I know. Um, what it means is it means that there's a content deal out there for somebody because yeah. you've got bazillion years of WWE content, you got a bazillion years of UFC content. Uh, not to mention the new stuff, but somebody out there is going to get rich on that media deal. Yeah, and no off season for either, right? So it's should be. Yeah. Well, that's that's just it. And then you know, do you take bits and pieces of them? Do you open up UFC UK and UFC Japan and or all those? You is know it what I mean? The next big American media rights deal because NBA is coming up soon. Right. No, I don't think it's the it's it's being talked about right now. I I think NBA is the big one. Yeah, I think the NBA one is is again, you know, we just saw the premiership go to Sky TV. We were talking to Adam uh, Seaborn about that on Wednesday. Um, there's still money out there. Surprising to me, there's still money out there. Right. I was reading somewhere that they say that after the next NBA deal, the expectation was that like salaries could go up to like 75 to 80 million yes. a year for players. Which yes. Like, yes. Why? If you're LeBron James, you just kind of hang out for a couple more. Well, years. I think that's <laughs> why he wants Bronny to make it. Yep. Right. And, and you know, no, I do. Yeah. I think he wants the money not to play with his kid, but you know what I mean? Like, um, no, I, I think there's GMs right now in this, in, in the NBA that are getting ready to pay that and, and are, you know, kind of making decisions today based on what it's going to be. Yeah. You know, if I, if I pay this guy today, what am I going to have to qualify him in the new leagues and, you know, or what are we going to have left? And uh, it's, it's the one. And again, I'm a Homer, but the one I'm fascinated to see is when Rogers deals end, ends for the NHL, the gravy train might be over there. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we, I do not expect that to be a one media group winning the whole thing next time. It has to be split up, right? Um, there's nothing that I see about Rogers that sends me signals that they want to spend any money on anything They're They brought in a, a hockey show for the playoffs. Like they're importing a hockey show. I see more Jack Edwards and Rick ball on that, on that, those stations, right? Like they take, you know, again, if you're a Jays fan, but this year is better. I think there was a few more spring training games, but there was a spring training there a couple years ago. I think they did one or two games. Um, 
I don't know, man. You know, and again, you know, and you probably heard this in the NFL side of things, the fact that Amazon might get the flex and everything. And there's a lot of people angry about that because they've only been doing it for one year and haven't had much success. But there's a lot of thought that Goodell really believes in streaming. Where does Gary Bettman fit on streaming? And now with those RSNs f failing in the United States, streaming might be that might. And I'm not sure about Canada because they're not failing up here yet. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's inevitable that that's the way it goes. Right. I mean, I think that it's where every other entertainment business has gone. It's where the music industry went was to, you know, Spotify and Apple Music. Yeah, but but the music, the zone didn't, you know, DAZN spent a lot of money, hasn't quite gotten over. ESPN Plus spent some money, hasn't quite got over, right? Like, you know. I, mean, I think ESPN Plus has been a success for Disney. Um, and I just, I, I'm, I think it has been, but it hasn't become Netflix. It hasn't become, you know, I would say right. Disney Plus is probably bigger than, and I might be completely wrong on those yeah. numbers, but it hasn't impacted the the world of, you know, they haven't become that big figure in in rights deals. I guess let's, the NHL's on there, but it's an add on, right? For sure, and that's. I mean, I think that's going to be ultimately the question because it'll be the tech streamers that have the money to actually buy. Like it'll be the Amazons. Um, it would be Netflix, but I mean, those are really tech companies that produce content. Like is is what they are, right? Um, might be this. Might be the Nation Network. Let's. let's we might. We might be the carriers for in the National Hockey League the next go round. I mean, you got Peter Mark coming on. We got Peter Mark. Well, you got Peter Mark coming on, right? Wow. You know who else is coming on that show? You haven't quite decided. Yet. Haven't quite decided. I'm in the process of it. Okay, and then you're you got uh, two weeks from today. You're hosting too. Yeah. So we got. Yeah, I think we have three. I'm days getting lazy up. all of a sudden. Yeah. I'm just not showing up. I'm just gonna have you do the shows. I appreciate it. It's uh, no, it should be fun. Well, I'm gonna. I'm not going to say I'm always trying to secure one person who will say yes, but then not quite say yes to me. So I'm hoping to get that guy for Wednesday, um, but we'll see. Otherwise, there's lots going on. Oh, I know who he is. Yeah. Okay. I know who he is. All right. Um, 50, your 50 thoughts tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So, and what do you call it? Danny Austin's 50 things I'm watching this okay. Peter season. Okay. Um, so a lot of it we. I always like the I like the old Peter King ten things I think I think I know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that one was always. I can relate to that. If there's one thing I know, I don't want to be drawing any conclusions at this point in the CFL season. So it's better to do like things I'm looking out for as opposed to things that I think. Okay, so who, who's outside of Calgary? Who's going to be the most improved team this year? Edmonton. Really? Yeah, I suspect Edmonton could push for a playoff spot. Yeah, it's tough because I don't think the East is as bad. So you really, I think you're going to have three and three. I don't okay. think we're going to have a crossover because um, I think Toronto and Hamilton are good. I think Ottawa should be improved. Montreal, I'm not really that concerned about. Yeah. So, but I, I think BC will regress. Who's their quarterback? Vernon Adams Jr. Okay. Yeah. That's um, right. Who like I like as a quarterback, but they also lost Brian Burnham, right? Like, yeah. They made oh, some yeah, improvements. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. like they're going to be a bad team, but you went from Nathan Rourke. Who More importantly, who's playing home opener? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, yeah, so I look, I think you'll see Winnipeg one, Calgary two, third, three. I'll go Edmonton. I'll go on record. Yeah, yeah I like Edmonton. I, I, I don't bet against Chris Jones in year two. I just don't do it. No, I know. I want to. I really want to. I don't like him, but I also liked what I saw from Cornelius last year. I, I, I think, I think Trey Ford should get some reps. I, I quietly like that Edmonton team a lot. You do, eh? Yeah. Okay. Not as a great cup winner, but as a no, 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 no. But boys. but being better, yeah. right? Being better because eighteen in a row without a win at home. Yeah. And that's where, like, that's I won't worry about Edmonton until if they start winning. If they're like an eleven win team this year and and they still aren't trying, that's when I start to worry about that market. But. I think we'll see an improvement and hopefully we see the fans come back. Yeah. Well, and part of what might go against them is the NHL team might be playing for a while too, right? That's there could be crossover at the beginning of the season. Quite a bit of crossover. God, it can't happen. <sighs> I keep I keep picking them because I figure if I keep picking them, then they'll fail for sure. Because I'm the is, world's they're worst. They're so good. Oh, I know. They're like the are they or they can or can they just score themselves out of trouble? You know what I mean? Yeah. But because I go back to that game against LA down three nothing in the first period and they did nothing and they came back and won. I said, that's it. They believe. Yeah. Right. They there's nothing this team can't do. And even when, you know, uh, Vegas punches them right in the nose 
and then they come back and punch Vegas in the I nose. I'm going to be very curious if it continues to sort of flip flop with one team blowing out the other. I think it's sort of fascinating that that's happening. I think he he doesn't get enough credit. Oh, here we go. Here are the scores. Thanks, Gav. Gav's an Oiler fan, so I get lots of Oiler information. Oh, I, you know that already. Um, I think the one thing that nobody talks about. I think this team made such an incredible move with Ekholm and not chasing Carlson, right? Because yeah. they were in that Carlson for a bit there. Yeah. You know, when you get Friedman and Johnson reporting it, it it's happening, right? But Ekholm has been just outstanding for them, and I think Carlson would have been an anchor. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think Ekholm's a terrific hockey player. That team, honestly, I mean, they're pretty well constructed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give them credit. If you give them credit, it goes right to their heads, and then oh, oh. then we have to listen to the City of Champions, and then they'll, they'll all spend a Sunday out there painting a sign for Niskew, and oh, it'll just go south in, the, in a hurry, right? Yeah. Uh, Danny, appreciate it. this as always. Uh, thank you for stepping in next uh, Wednesday, and we'll get you back on because obviously there's lots to talk about. And le- please let us know when you're dropping the. 6 30 in the morning show <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you man thank you so much for having me all right thanks brother danny austin he is the best from post media you can uh, grab his uh call him tomorrow 50 storylines worth uh, watching this year that he has picked out for the calgary stampeders